Hi friends, so today we will see how to create application using the JBPM. So this is the site, actually JBPM works with the main site. So JBPM for JBPM application. So it has two ways to develop the application. One way is a standard rule and another one is an embedded one. So in a standard loan, what exactly we need to do, we need to download the JBPM final zip, then we need to extract it and run it. So we will see how it will be done. Okay, so at the right hand side, so it has a download option. Okay, so we need to download this zip file, then we need to unzip it, and if we are running on Linux or Windows, depending on that. We need to execute the command means we need to run the standalone sh or standalone bat so it will bring up the server and its editor as well so this will be the local url for us so if we download it, it how it will be structured i'll show you so uh, i have already downloaded it so it will be just like this gpp server 7.31.0 final this chip so i have extracted it here here sorry this so inside this this is a jboss server okay so in that chip um so in that uh, project what uh, they have included they have included three wars here and under deployments so one is a business central another is jbbm case management and kai server so we are widely using this business central and kai server so business central is uh, for the development purpose it is providing support for the web editor where we can develop application and we can deploy that application on the kai server so kai server is a process server where uh, we are deploying the application and uh, we're actually running on it okay so if you want to run this application so in this one uh, in bin so we need to run this standalone.bat file okay and in standalone.xml the, uh, they have added the actual dependencies of jbpm okay so like this we can uh, build the application for standalone purpose okay so another way is the embedded server okay so for that embedded server we need to download the basic project from star.jpm.org okay so i will open this site star.jpm.org okay so this is the site from where we can build sorry uh, we can uh, download our basic application so mostly i am using this configure your business application if i click on this uh, configure business application so it will provide the different options that is business automation decision management and business optimization so i am developing this business application so i will use this option as business automation and i will do the next so here I need to provide the package name and the application name. So package name we can develop any we can give anything and uh, we can give the application name and there are different versions. Okay. So some enterprises versions are there and actual uh, GBP final jar also. Sorry, versions are there. So enterprise is uh, nothing but the GBP that's Red Hat PAM versions and uh, GBP these are the actual versions of gbpm so next step is i need to do next and it will include this business assets data model and service one more asset is the dynamic access but we are currently using the business asset data model and service so this option will actually download the business example business application so i have already downloaded it 
So I will show you that application. I have given the name of the workflow manager. This is workflow manager. Okay. So basically for this application, it will contain three parts. So here also you can see these three parts. One is business asset, one is data model and service. So what all the business assets are there? That is nothing but the KJAR project. And another is one is model and service. So model is the data objects. We can use this into the KJAR project or into the services. Service is a project. It's a deploy, deployable project. So actual deployment will be done from these projects. It has launch dot bad and uh, its uh, configuration files are there under the source. If you see into the resources, you will see that application dot properties where database connection actual what are the features we need. So those we can enable from here. So like this CBPM case management use the data sources. Then uh, it's a GPA. If you want to create any another Oracle connection, then also you can place the property. Oh, sorry, values here. The resources. If you want to bring this server up, okay. So first, we need to go into this project. That is Workflow Manager. Then go into the service project. And here, give the command that launch, launch back and clean install. So it will build the three jars. That is one K jar, model, and service jars. And then it will be deployed, and it will bring one server, the Spring Boot application server. So meanwhile, I will show what are the properties are present into the service POM file. Okay, the, these are the uh, components. Sorry, these are the configurations present. So initially, it will contain this dependency cry server Spring Boot starter, Spring Boot starter sorry start a test this is for testing purpose and this is actually will include actually this below i have used sorry added after after uh, after some time means those dependencies okay so i will tell what are those dependencies as well so these three to four dependencies to enable the swagger ui so in my actual I have already added this so you can so how to start the application on the local I have just given the command another one is the enable swagger in a GBPM application so for that enabling swagger these properties are there these dependencies we need to add so after this dependency the swagger UI will get enabled and these dependencies I have added for the Oracle connection. So it will for the Oracle driver. And one more property I have added here. Sorry, it's not the correct one. Application property. Okay, I will not need that. Source menu. So, application property. This. so here one more you have to add to enable the swagger this line okay, swagger not enabled is equal to two. this we need to add to enable the swagger so we'll see how server is started or not okay server is starting up so I will then first thing okay now let it bring up then we'll check yeah this application is started 
Alex Pehmu, what exactly he did. So first, if you see this model project is built here. So it downloaded dependencies and uh, created the snapshot jar for that model project. This model snapshot dot jar. Another is a key jar project. This is actually main asset of business application. So here uh, it's controlled BPD or uh, data rules. All these things are here in KJAR. So it also created one jar that is workflow manager KJAR dot jar. And another last one is created that workflow manager service jar. So this jar is created. And after that, after when he created three jars, then it will bring the JBAPM Spring Boot application. So here, using the some properties, it will get started. And whatever the jar we have, that jar it will create one container, cont workflow manager kdr dot snapshot, and it will deploy it into the Kaiser. Okay. So you'll see. Oh, there is one line. Okay, right, this one. Container workflow kdr snapshot is successfully deployed successfully started see it started so uh, how to open this so by default it's starting on port 8090 localhost so here you will see that project is built. Okay, I have restarted this road. There was some issue. So, after start, you can say the localhost 1890. This server is running, and whatever the snapshot we have, it will show you that workflow manager service snapshot is there. So, here are some links also there that is for JBPM documentation or for help. Okay, that means like this, it's get. Deployed. Is how can we see those uh, it's deployed or not? Um, or our KJR is deployed or not correctly? So it has feature that Swagger UI. So I already explained that uh, it will get enabled like this. This case Swagger. Then in pom.xml these dependencies we need to add. So that actually help is available on jbpm.org if you go here jbpm.org so go to the start business application and inside go beyond the basics and build the documentation so if you go into the rig here so you will find that explanation here so let this open configure business application so it's here it's mentioned it's basic information are present here actual project and uh, inside this one swagger information also there configure business application Parts information here, external databases. Yeah, here. So like this, we need to add these dependencies in pom.xml of service project. Okay, and we can enable like this. We need to add this inside the 
application dot properties so this is the main json so if you want to, to view into the ui for this we need to add this dependency and after that dependency we need to run this url so it is ipi docs and url is actual spider.json so i have already opened it so when you open this at the time it will ask you the username and password so by default username and password is the user user right so first these are different uh, APIs provided by JPP my application so if we go into the uh, different uh, uh, operations one uh, process query is also there so we will see there is one great API is there so which will show you the all the process definitions so this is the API okay. and uh, when we open this so it will provide some input parameters for page size source so right now we don't have much application so I can directly execute this try it okay so in the response body you will see so there is one process is here okay so i have one application i have built on the test project 2 and it has one bpd is there test bpd which is under the kjar project so likewise it will create one process id and a container id mostly this will be always useful for us to execute any rest APIs. So whatever the jar we have so like this it will create a container id and process id is that whatever the project name dot the bpd name process if sorry BPD, business process definition test bpd if you if you want to see this uh, so we can go into my projects so i can show you miss from where it is taking that if you go to the resources and this is the package i have so test bpd dot bpml file okay so this is the bpd actually okay so like this it is giving so if you want to start process instance right now I will, I will not show you the how to create the process I will not show you the practically uh, creating this. just I will give the information in the process instances you will see one post API to create the instance this so it requires the container ID and the process ID so what are the container ID is this which we previously see is the container and in process ID we need to give this and whatever the input parameters we can provide this into the body and we can execute so it will be to not fund response if the process instance get it created okay for now okay that's all for this first video this is my first attempt <laughs> hope you like it okay thank you for watching this